Okay. So, sorry if you lost me there for a second. <coughs> I am back there. So, let's see. Um, if you lost me, just reload your screen and connect with with this version. And you should be able to, to see me there. I was going to type to uh, reload if you lost me. There you go. Okay, so um, I have just typed reload if you lost me and you will get me back. Hopefully you can see me now. Please say hi. Hope you're there. Okay. Uh, Linda says, get well soon. Bye bye for now. Bye bye, Linda. Hopefully I will get well soon. Um, it's not nice having a bunged up nose. Okay, so if you've just joined me um, and you've got any questions, uh, please leave a question in the chat section below. Um, I will all, I'll try and answer all of your questions. Uh, I really love um, getting into a conversation and a chat, so please get typing. Or if you don't have a question, just say hello. I like to know that you're there. <clears throat> okay, Mark says, where is everybody from? Uh, Mark's in Paris. Um, I'm in Shropshire, England, which is in the middle of England. So yeah, um, please let please let everyone know where you're from. Um, Paris is one place I would like to go. Although I'm not sure I'd like to go on that roundabout that has about seven lanes. Um, I think that would be rather scary. And I'd love to visit Versailles as well. I think Versailles is very interesting. Um, I'd love to see to see the big palace of Versailles. Um, and going back a couple of months, I did do a video on the Royal Yacht Britannia. Now, there has been renewed talk, as I predicted, post-Brexit. Uh, there would be renewed talk for a Royal Yacht Britannia, a new one. And, of course, that has happened. There is talk of a new Royal Yacht Britannia. And I fully support that idea. I think there should be a new Royal Yacht Britannia. I think it's very important post-Brexit as a trade ship. And, of course, having the Royal Connection will help. It always helps to sweeten the deal. Lots of... Um, Foreign governments are really impressed by the, by the fact that they can sign a trade deal aboard um, a royal yacht that has royal connections. And not just trade deals, but also bringing business into the country. So I do think it's very important, and I'm glad that talks have been renewed, that there are open discussions. And I hope that in a couple of years, we will see a new royal yacht. Um, so, of course, um, I did do my video just after the Brexit result. So I like to think I was a little bit ahead of the trend there. Okay. Um, Mark says, a new Britannia, who is deciding? Um, it has to be debated by our Parliament. So um, our government, our Conservative government, led by Prime Minister Theresa May, would have to decide that it was the right course of action. They'd have to approve the funding and it would have to get through uh, the Houses of Parliament. Um, so it could happen. There were plans in 1997, but they were dropped by the Labour government and Tony Blair. Um, so they could resurrect those plans or they could make completely new plans. Who knows? But the fact is there are serious talks about a new royal yacht. And I think that's the most important thing. Uh, Chelsea says she's from Iowa, USA, which is in the middle of the USA. 
So hello to all my friends in Iowa. Uh, do I have anybody on at the minute from Canada? Do I have any Canadians watching? I'd love to know what you think about the upcoming uh, visit, which is actually due, I think they're due to arrive in a couple of hours, maybe even less than a couple of hours. So uh, just wondering what you think about all that. Okay, Linda is from Simpsonville in the USA. Is that um, SC for South Carolina? I'm trying to remember my American geography. Uh, but yeah, going back to Britannia, I would love to see a new Royal Yacht Britannia being sent all over the world to, um, to do business and to do trade. I think it would be a real asset to the UK. Um, lots of countries have uh, royal planes and lots of royal, royal transport that go off all the way across the world. And I don't see why Great Britain should be any different. Okay, uh, Mark says, monarchists in the USA. Uh, question mark. What do you mean by the question mark? Do you mean are there monarchists in the USA? Um, I hope so. I hope there's lots of monarchists all the way around the world. Even if you come from a country that doesn't have one, um, I like to think that maybe you'd be in support of them. Chelsea says, I think I'm the only person from Iowa watching. Well, hello to my only person from Iowa watching. Okay, so do I have any further questions? Uh, Loretta says she's from Richmond in the USA. Is CA short for California? Okay, um, C's, C's Keatman is from, I am from Alkmaar in the Netherlands. Sorry if I pronounced that completely wrong. Uh, so hello to all my friends in the Netherlands. Okay, uh, Mark says, no viewers in the UK. <laughs> Probably not, we're probably all... Uh, well, it is quite late here, it's sort of about half past ten, so probably a lot of people have gone to bed. But, but we'll see. In fact, actually, uh, uh, probably a lot of my viewers are from uh, America, Canada, and I think my, my sort of fourth biggest... Um, country that watches my videos, believe it or not, is the Philippines. So, hello to all my um, viewers in the Philippines. If you're from the Philippines and you're watching now, please say hi. Um, I do know that, that, that you're watching. I do know that you watch my videos. Um, I really couldn't believe it. When I looked at my um, stats on the internet and it said that my fourth largest um, country that watched my videos is the Philippines, I was very surprised. Um, so yeah, I, I was just really surprised. So hello to anyone from the Philippines. Uh, Loretta says, what's my goal for the, for the channel? Well, my ultimate goal is obviously to spread the word of the Royal Family, to get more and more people interested in the Royal Family, and to engage young people in the Royal Family. That's my ultimate goal. Um, Short-term goal, I suppose, by Christmas, I'd like to see... Um, close to about 5,000 subscribers. We're currently at uh, 2,700. Um, and I suppose my ultimate goal for the channel is so that I'm able to not do my day job and literally do royal videos full time. I would love to be able to cover every single story, every single event that goes on. I mean, as it is, um, because I have a full time job, I have to kind of pick and choose the stories that I think are the most important or interesting to report on. 
I can't cover everything, I don't have the time. And I would also love to be able to go and cover uh, lots of these royal events in person. I'd like to actually go and take my own pictures and just do it by myself, independently, uh, without being employed by a newspaper or uh, a, a TV company. I'd just like to be able to work for myself and uh, deliver all the royal stories to you guys in my way. So I think that would be my ultimate aim. Um, I'd also like to see, um, obviously, lots more expansion of the Facebook and Twitter. Um, but I think I'm really happy with the way things are at the minute. I'm just happy that people are watching my videos. Um, sometimes I can't believe that people do. But yes, I would like a lot more time to be able to bring you everything that I'd like. Um, I'd also quite like to do some uh, expand into other things like uh, royal cookery. I have some royal cookery books and I'd love to be able to film myself making um, some royal cakes or royal food that the Queen likes. So yeah, so I've got lots of different ideas. Uh, what would you like to see? Okay, uh, Linda says, have a great night, get well soon. Good night, Linda. Hopefully I will. Uh, Madame Gothica says, thoughts on if Prince Harry will settle down? Um, I think he's going to settle down into a new house. Um, I'm pretty convinced he's bought Waterhall, uh, which cost £3.6 million. Um, if in terms of finding um, a partner and settling down, I don't know. I think he's, he's finding it very hard to find the, the, the right person. The right person who will fit into the family, into the lifestyle, into the role, into the, I suppose, in a way it's a job. So he has to find someone who can fit into all those different uh, things. And I think he does go for kind of quite free-spirited type people. And... Of course, the problem with a free-spirited person is that they don't like to be caged, they don't like to be tied down, they don't like to be restricted, uh, which, of course, being a member of the royal family inevitably does in a certain way. So I think he would like to settle down, but I don't think he's anywhere near that point yet. Uh, Chelsea says, I'm a monarchist, my mother hates it, but I have seen a video on why the UK still has the Queen. I think it's very important that we do still have the Queen for the, for the United Kingdom. Um, it just, I think it's a better form of government. Um, I certainly wouldn't swap it for any other form in the world. Uh, Loretta says, do you know if Buckingham Palace is aware of your channel? I don't know. Uh, sometimes I do uh, copy them into tweets. Um, but I don't know. I really don't know. I would love, well, I think I'd be quite nervous if, um, if I knew that Prince Harry or Prince William were watching. Um, so if you are watching, hello. Um, <clears throat> I hope I do, do every member of the Royal Family Justice. And of course, um, there's always going to be times when I have to report on the good stories about the Royal Family and possibly negative stories as well. So, of course, I just aim to tell the truth and put the truth out there and not to speculate too much. And, of course, if something is speculation, I always say it's speculation and that nothing has been confirmed. So I hope if they are watching that they know that I'm, uh, I'm being fair in my, in my videos of what I put out there and that I am just telling the truth about what's happened. And of course that's what people who watch my videos, I think, want to see, is just the truth. They don't want to see loads of gushy, wishy-washy comments and uh, opinion, pre opinion presented as fact. I think people want to just see the truth. Uh, okay. Uh, Seas Keatman says, what kind of work do I do? Uh, my day job, I work in a special needs school. So I work with children who have special educational needs. And sometimes um, complex, medi complex medical conditions. So I hope that answers your question. OK, 
Okay, so if I have any new viewers, if you've uh, got any questions, please leave them in the chat box below. Please be aware I do have a cold, so I don't always sound like this. I am really bugged up. Um, I do always enjoy these chats. I think it's really important to have a time in the week uh, where we can all come together and just uh, discuss what's happened in the week uh, and look forward to the week ahead. Uh, again, if you've just sort of joined in, I, I'm not able to do next week, so there will be no live chat next week, uh, but I will be back the next week. Um, I have a prior engagement that I can't get out of. So, so no live chat next week. Just so you know. So if you tune in <clears throat> and I'm not there, you know why. Okay, so I think I'm going to stick around for probably another 10-15 minutes. So if you've got any burning questions, please let me have them. And of course, please keep tuning back in the week because there will be lots of royal updates um, on the Canadian tour. In fact, I think they'll be arriving in about an hour's time. Um, so, so please watch whatever media you can and uh, you'll see them arrive. Uh, I'm really looking forward to them stepping off the plane and I really want to see how uh, Princess Charlotte has changed. Okay, Mark says, what subject for the next video? The next video will definitely be the Cambridge Tour of Canada. And that will probably dominate the entire week. Um, so I'm hoping not too many other royal stories happen because I'm not going to have enough time to cover them all. Um, so I will be bringing you the Canadian tour probably a day after the previous day. So for example, day one, I'll be reporting on day two. And that's because of the time difference. And so that I can make sure that I've got all the pictures and all the information to put on that video. So I'll be working, I suppose, a day behind. So that will be the theme of the week, really. Okay, uh, Mark says, it's not their uh, first official trip to Canada. No, it's their second. Um, I think the first one was in 2011 or something like that. Um, so it's been a, a good few years. Um, but yes, it's their second, but it's their first with their children. Okay. Um, Loretta says, last week I spoke on the Royals right. Um, not quite sure what you mean there, Loretta. Okay, so please, any questions, please leave it in the chat box below. Okay, okay, Loretta says, last week I spoke on the royal's right to privacy. Are there laws that protect them beyond others? I think we have quite good privacy laws in the UK. Um, and of course, it's always a little bit of a touchy subject because in one respect, the royals need the media and the press to sort of put out their messages and to support their charities. So in a way, they do kind of use the media for when they're working. So that's sort of, officially, they court the press attention when they're working. The, the, the sort of wishy-washy area comes when it's private time. And of course, once the press feel they have a stake in someone, they feel they can stretch that to private time. Uh, we do have quite stringent press rules and regulations on privacy. Um, we can, of course, get injunctions out if someone feels like a story is going to break and um, it breaches their rights of privacy. Um, and, of course, those laws could be applied in the case of Pippa Middleton. Uh, she could po possibly get a high court injunction to stop any pictures being published, although our media are fairly good in that respect these days 
if something is obviously private, they may not purchase the pictures, which I believe they haven't. Uh, but that's not true necessarily for foreign media. So, yes, there are laws that protect. Um, but if something is viewed that it's in the public interest, that's when it can be published. OK, Mark says, how does an English subject view its Queen being also the head of the state of another country? Um, well, I can't speak for everyone in the UK, but I can speak for how I see it. And I see it merely as sort of the Queen is the Queen and she has lots of different countries that she is um, head of state of. And I see, for example, um, Canada on exactly the same level as Australia as the UK, as, you know, Scotland, as all the other different countries that she's head of. So it's kind of like an umbrella. So I kind of see the Queen is like there, and all the other countries are on the same level below. I don't see any country as being more important than the other. And of course, to, to the Queen, they aren't. Um, she is head of all these different countries, and she views them all equally. She might live in the UK, but, of course, she can't live everywhere, so it just so happens that she lives in the UK. But she takes her uh, uh, overseas countries incredibly seriously, the same as she does the UK. But, of course, she can't be everywhere. So, um, I don't ever see it as the Queen or the, the UK are above other countries. I always see it as we're all level pegged. Um, I think that's how I see it. I mean, I'm, I can't speak for everyone, but that's how I see it. So it's kind of like the Queen there and then all the other countries are level pegged underneath. And we're, we're all sort of equal. And of course, it doesn't matter if you've got an, an overseas monarch. For example, Australia perfectly manages to rule and govern themselves, as does Canada, as does the UK. But we all share the same head of state. Um, and I quite like that um, nation and union of the Commonwealth. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, Loretta says, in America, the royals are viewed as celebrities. Um, I didn't understand duty until I started watching you. What responsibilities do the royals have for the British people? Um, I think, uh, let's go back to the first uh, part of your question. Um, I think Americans may very well view uh, the royals as celebrities, but they, of course, they aren't. Um, they aren't famous for something. They aren't famous for even being them. They were born into a position, so it is very different to a celebrity. Uh, and, of course, they do have duty. Um, what comes with that position is a sense of duty, and, of course, that is bred into them, and they are all very dutiful. Of course, that's why it can be quite hard to marry into the family, because um, if, you're, if you're born into the family, you have that sense of duty right from birth, and it can take a lot of getting used to if you marry into the family. Uh, what responsibilities do the royals have? Um, they don't have a written-down responsibility. They don't even have a written-down job role. Uh, I suppose the, the Queen kind of has um, step things that she has to do, but uh, even the, the Prince of Wales... Um, the Duke of Cambridge, they don't have a set job role. It's just they do what they can to help support the country and to support the Queen or, or the monarch of the day. Um, and of course, those responsibilities are very important to the British people because it puts a face to the state. It, puts, it makes the state human. And I think that's what a lot of re uh, republics lack. And of course, it's the continuity as well. You don't get the same level of continuity in a republic as you do with a monarchy. And of course they have the experience as well. They have, I mean, just think the Queen has over 60 years of experience of being head of state. What other prime minister or president has that level of um, understanding of how society works and how society has changed? Uh, Mark says they are famous by their birth. Uh, of course, you know, if you're born into the media, you are famous from your birth. Of course you are. 
that goes without saying. Uh, but what I suppose the, the difference is they don't court the media for their own financial gain. Um, they don't have any financial obligations um, to do anything in the media. In fact, the, the Queen has never given um, a proper interview. And I think that, uh, but, but yet she's still the most famous, arguably the most famous woman in the world. But yet she's never given a, an interview. How does that work? I don't even know myself, but it just does. And I think in that respect, it's so important for Britain to retain the monarchy. And I don't think the monarchy um, is going anywhere anytime soon. Okay, so thank you for those really good questions. Do I have any other questions? And of course, um, if you are a member of the, the royal family that does do public royal duties, uh, you want... I suppose really allowed to make money from other sources you sort of you do it because uh, because that's what you like to do to support the queen and of course some uh, members of the royal family do get accommodation um, some some relatives have accommodation in Kensington Palace I suppose in exchange for the royal duties Okay, so unless I have any other questions, and uh, due to my really bad cold, uh, I think we're going to end this chat session here. Thank you very much if you've joined. Thank you for all the comments. Um, I've really enjoyed them. I think we've had some really interesting chat. I will cobble together all the pieces of video and put them together as one big video. Oh, I've just had a few questions come through. Uh, Chelsea says, what happens if the Queen gets sick to the point that she has to be... Uh, that she has to be the face of the royal family but Charles is about I think what you mean is if she's unable to do the job what happens uh, basically we have a regency council which is made up of uh, quite a few politicians and possibly Prince. I think it's Prince Charles as well some members of the family and if the Queen um, can't physically do the job or if she has um, some kind of if she develops dementia for example then the Regency Council can appoint a regent, which would be Prince Charles. So Prince Charles would become Prince Regent and would do all the duties of the Queen. In effect, he'd be king, but without actually being called king. Um, and the Queen would enter complete retirement. But of course, we're in uh, quite uncharted territories at the moment because the Queen is of sound mind. She's of healthy body. Um, she's just getting old. And she's the oldest monarch that we've had. So we are in very uncharted waters. So going by past precedent, there would be no reason to appoint a regent because she's of sound mind and she's of sound body. So for Charles to become a regent, either one of those things would have to happen to the Queen um, or he just wouldn't be Prince Regent. He'd just carry on being delegated um, royal tasks from his mother, which is what he's doing at the moment. Uh, Loretta says, uh, what were you going to show us last week before we lost the visual? I was going to show you a royal cookbook and I forgot to bring it downstairs. Uh, I keep all my books upstairs. Um, it's a royal cookbook I had from Buckingham Palace and it's got lots of royal recipes and I was going to ask you to choose a recipe that I could try and cook. So I promise I will bring that down uh, for two weeks time when I'm back so you can choose a recipe and I will try and make that recipe and I will hopefully try and film myself doing it and make a video of it so um, unless we have any other questions I'm going to leave it here for now uh, Mark says keep up the good work thanks for the videos and again I will, will not be here next week but I will be the week after and hopefully minus the really bunged up nose. So hopefully I'll sound a lot more like me. 
So, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy the upcoming videos on the Canadian tour. Um, any comments, please leave them. Share on social media and subscribe to my channel. So, thank you for watching. From me in Shropshire, goodbye.